right. Well, again, welcome, welcome, welcome. My name is Felipe, Felipe Duenas, and I want to welcome everybody to this Wisens Getting Ready for High School. In this case, we are going to cover Getting Ready for Spanish 3. Okay, we are going to be uh, learning um, what you are going to study in Spanish 3 this year. Uh, and I want to welcome you. Uh, also, I want to give you uh, a couple of reminders. Um, if you were able to see um, our previous videos, um, Spanish 1 or Spanish 2, that is great because that is a great review of everything you have seen in the past and of course if you haven't seen it i encourage you to do it because uh, we cover a lot of stuff that you cannot forget okay i keep saying that um, spanish works like that uh, and if you don't believe me and i'm sure you do but if you don't uh, you're going to see how I'm going to be referring during this session. I'm going to be referring to things that you have studied in Spanish 1 and Spanish 2. So if you haven't done that, feel free to do it. Uh, we encourage you to do it. Okay. And also, uh, I want to remind everybody that if you have any questions about what we uh, are going to be seeing today with the stuff that we are going to review, please feel free to ask me using uh, the question and answer uh, icon right there. Feel free to ask me the questions. Um, we are going to cover a whole year of study, nine months of Spanish 3 in 30 minutes. So I have to go a little fast. Um, I try to be very clear. I'm going to show you a lot of examples. Um, I'm going to show you a lot of pictures. But again, if you have any questions, please, 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 I welcome this question. All right? Well, very well, very well, guys. Um, let's go. Let's go with the beginning. We're going to start from the beginning. And the first thing we are going to do is I'm going to share my screen. Okay. And I'm going to take you to the Wizen Virtual Classroom. Okay. Oh, perdón. So sorry. Vamos a borrar esto. And this is what we are going to see today. We're going to focus on the past participle. Okay. What is the past participle? Mm, you know what it is. We're going to see it in a minute. Trust me, you know what it is. Uh, maybe you don't remember the name, but you know what this is. Where you know, um, we are going to see how to get it, how we obtain the past participle in Spanish, how we use that as adjectives, and also how we use the past participle to create the present perfect and the uh, sorry past perfect. Okay, present perfect and past perfect. Again, you know what these tenses are in English. Maybe you don't remember the name. We are going to see them and we are going to, to see how we create them and how we use them in Spanish. Okay? Second big thing for tonight, the subjunctive, el subjuntivo. Okay? We are going to use the conjugation as well as the uses. Okay? Why subjunctive? What do we uh, create it? What do we use it for? This is going to be a big chunk of your class this year, the subjunctive. Um, I'm not gonna lie to you, it's probably also one of the hardest because if you are relying on translation, every time you do an exercise, every time you have to write something, ooh, that can be a little hard to do with the subjunctive because you don't have this in English. You don't have it. So, as well, please, let, let's, let's try to, to, to see this together. 
and and I'm gonna give you a few a few things, a few tips to to master the subjunctive. Also, la voz pasiva, the passive voice, el impersonal se. That's another big thing we're gonna see. And finally, para versus for. These prepositions in English, for or in order to. Uh, when do we use para or when do we use for? Also, is going to be part of your class, okay? And this one can be confusing. Um, just to summarize this again, subjunctive is gonna take a big chunk of your class. It can be quite complicated. It's easy to conjugate, but it's a little hard to use because you don't have it in English. The passive voice, the personal say, and the para and for, they are small things and small pieces of the puzzle, but again, also important. Okay, so this is what we are going to be uh, learning during this next 30 minutes, starting with El participio, all the past participle. What is this? Well, I give you an example here. The store is closed. You see how the word for closed has an ed at the end. Well, that is because this is el participio or el past participle. Okay, from to close we go to close. That is the past participle. In this case, we are using the past participle as an adjective to describe the store, okay? How about the second sentence? I have been there before. I've been there before, okay? This being right there is also the past participle. In this case, we are using it to create the presente perfecto or the present perfect, which we are going to see in a second. Okay, so these verbs right here are conjugated in the past participle. Okay, usually we obtain it in English adding an ed, but you have a few irregulars like to be, which is being. All right. So to create the past participle in English, these are the, I mean, sorry, in Spanish, of course, we have to uh, follow these uh, rules. If the verb is an IR verb, we are gonna remove IR and we are gonna add ADO. Cerrar, we'll go to cerrado. And for ER and IR, we are gonna remove the ending and we are gonna add ido. So these are the ado, ido form of the verb. See, está cerrado, is closed. Make sense? Okay. Now, same thing as in English, we have the regular past participle. All right. Uh, we don't have a lot. That's the good thing. In English, you have a long list of irregular past participle. Uh, in Spanish, we don't have that many. We have them right here. Okay, abrir, morir, romper, ver. All these verbs at this stage on Spanish street, they seem sound familiar. Okay, decir, to say. No, it's supposed to be decido, right? It's an IR verb, so we will remove the IR and we put ido, decido, but no. It's not. It will be dicho. Okay. Say with ver. Oh, ER verb. Okay. Following the rule is to be vido. But no. It is visto. Okay. This list has to be here. Okay. I promise you, uh, these irregular past participles are the ones that are going to show up all the time in exercises because we want you to remember them. All right, so how do we use el participio or the past participle? We do it just like in English as adjectives or to create perfect tenses. When talking about adjectives, okay, using the past participle as adjective, okay, 
Uh, you have to understand that most often we are going to use them with the verb estar. Okay, the door is open. La puerta está abierta. Okay, and if we, if we go back here, this is how abrir goes to abierto. Well, that's the general past participle. But if you remember from Spanish one, when we have adjectives, we have to take into consideration if it's going to be describing a masculine noun or a feminine noun, right? Well, in this case, puerta is feminine. So abierto will change to abierta. Make sense? All right. How about this one? Mario está deprimido. This verb comes from deprimirse or deprimir. All right. It's describing Mario, so it's masculine. Las ventanas están cerradas. The windows are closed. Cerrado will be the past participle. Since it's an adjective describing the state of the window, we are going to put it plural, okay, and feminine. Windows is pl windows are plural, more than one, and feminine because the word for window in Spanish, ventana, is feminine. Okay? All right, it's, it's exactly the same as English, except for the masculine, feminine, plural, singular rule, okay? You don't have to follow that rule in English, we do it back. All right? Very nice. So if we do, you know, let's, let's do this one. So la niña está dormir. We want to say the girl is asleep. Dormir is an IR verb. Okay, it's going to be describing the girl. Right? So for IR verb, dormir is a regular verb. It's not an irregular, it's regular. So. IR will become ido, okay? So, dormido. Since this is describing a girl, we change the O for an A. La niña está dormida. Is this making sense? All right, good. Again, if you have any questions, you can ask, all right? Very well, guys. Thank you. Now, as I mentioned before, we use the past participle as adjectives or also to create perfect tenses. In this case, we are, we are going to be talking about the present perfect and the past perfect. Let's start with the present perfect. Uh, what is that? Well, the present perfect tense is the one created by to have plus the past participle in English. I have taken, I have eaten, you have lived, uh, we have eaten, okay? In Spanish, we are going to create the same tense, meaning exactly the same theme as English, which is a great, because it's very simple to use, it's exactly the same as English. We are gonna form that with the auxiliary verb, haber, plus the past participle. Yo he tomado, tú has tomado, él ha comido, nosotros hemos vivido. Okay? Now, like I mentioned, we use this tense exactly the same as you use it in English. We use it to describe events in the past that somehow has some relationship with the present. Okay? For example, uh, yo he comido pollo. I have eaten chicken. Why am I using this tense? I have eaten chicken instead of um, for example, I ate chicken, okay? Yo 
for me, Pollo. Why should I why should I be using the past participle or the present perfect instead of the preterite? Well, because in the first case, when we are using the past participle, when we are using the present perfect, we are referring to that past action having some relationship with something in the present. Okay? Yo he comido pollo, I have eaten chicken. We are saying it that way because somehow that past action is related to the present right now. Somebody's asking us, uh, what have you had for, for uh, lunch or for dinner? Oh, I have eaten chicken, you know, I'm already that. I already ate, thank you for asking. You know, I'm not hungry. I just, I, I comido pollo, no tengo hambre. Okay, so that action carries the consequences into the present. Versus I ate chicken is just, and you know, I, I ate chicken when, but that was in the past. It has nothing to do with the present right now. Okay, that idea can be a little confusing when you think about it. But again, uh, you use the present perfect the same as you use it in English, which is great. Okay, remember, instead of to have to create the present perfect, we use a bear. Okay, you have the conjugations of a verb here, plus the ado ido form of the verb. All right? Great. Now, the next tense that we have is the past perfect. In Spanish, it's called preterito plus cuam perfecto. That's a funny word, but um, what is the preterito plus cuam perfecto? Well, let's start with the conjugation. Again, we are going to use a verb in the past, instead of in the present, había, había, sabía, habíamos, había y sabían, okay? Plus the ado y the form, okay? And if we have an irregular verb, we are going to use the irregular past participle. Madrid goes to abierto, just like we saw before, okay? Uh, when do we use the past Perfect. Okay, when do we use the past perfect? We use it to talk about the past of the past. Like when we talk about two actions in the past, the one that happened before will be in the past perfect. Is that making sense? Okay. You, for example, we have. Um, this uh, this example here. Cuando llegué a la fiesta, tú ya te había sido. When I arrived to the party, you had already left. Okay, so there are two actions in the past: me arriving to the party and you left. The action that happened first is the other person left the party. So that's why we use it in the present, I mean, sorry, in the past perfect. And then after that happened, I arrived. Okay, this tense is only used in this occasion. We have two actions in the past. The one that happened before is in the past perfect. Okay, in English, I have, um, let me, when I arrived to the party, uh, you had already left. Okay, oops, that disappeared, it's back. This happens. after this already happened okay this is the same as that one make sense all right again this is very 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 particular we only use this for that only okay only for that all right very well so remember 
past participle is ado or ido to create it. Ado or ido. And we have a few regulars. Now we use them for uh, as adjectives to describe things with the star. We use them for to, or to create the present perfect and the past perfect. All right? Very well. Now, the next thing is the subjunctive. Okay, like I mentioned at the beginning, subjunctive can be a little confusing because you don't have it in English. Well, you do, but you use it more like for a couple of expressions instead of like a whole thing with conjugations and, 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 and everything. Okay, so um, the subjunctive, or oh, let, let's talk a little bit here. I, I put here modo indicativo or the indicative. Okay, the indicative is what you have learned in the past, like the past, the present, the future, the conditional, the, um, the present perfect, past perfect. All those tenses describe things and gives you information about things that happen, have happened, will happen, okay? They indicate, they are objective, okay? This is what happened. So that's what you have been doing in Spanish all the time, okay? Let's hear, the person that, is, that speaks considers the action as a reality, like, es de día. It is, uh, um, there is day, daylight, it is day, it's not night anymore, it is day. Está corriendo, he is running, okay? We consider that like being a reality, okay? That's why we use the indicative. And then in the present, past, future, the subjunctive is a little different, okay? Just here to talk about hypothetical situations, something that is not real. And that sounds a little funny, like, what is this? Something that is not real? What do you mean? Well, it means something that maybe hasn't happened yet, but you wish for that to happen. That is when you're gonna, you are going to use the subjunctive. Okay. The subjunctive is a little funny because you cannot just decide to, oh, I'm going to use the subjunctive, period. I'm going to conjugate in the subjunctive. That, that, that cannot happen, okay? The subjunctive needs a trigger. Something triggers the subjunctive, okay? For example, dudo que. I doubt that it is daytime. Dudo que sea de día, okay? This guy is saying, oh, I doubt that it's day. I mean, there is any light on the on outside. What? Maybe he's inside. Maybe he doesn't know. Maybe he doesn't know the time, but he's calculated that he's been at home for three hours and it should be already nighttime, but he doesn't know. So he doubts that it is day. You see, we are using this expression, dude, okay. And after that, we use the subjunctive there. Yeah. All right, like an uncertainty. Something uncertainty, something uncertain will be using the subjunctive. Or, look, or this one, me gusta que. When you express what you feel, I like that you run. I like that you run, me gusta que corra. This is the subjunctive. Okay? Te ordeno que corras. I order you to run. Te ordeno que will be the expression that triggers the subjunctive. Tu corras is the subjunctive mood. Okay? So again, you need a trigger to use the subjunctive. Sea, corras, corras. They are, they, those three verbs are in the subjunctive mood. Okay? Of course, there are many of expressions that trigger the subjunctive. And that's what you're going to be studying during this year. This is usos, usos principales de subjuntivo. So when you express a desire, 
uh, you're asking for counsel, counseling, or you're giving somebody an advice, okay? Or you to express an emotion, or to express doubts, okay? Or characteristics, or um, the uses of something, we have to use the subjunctive, okay? Again, you can go around and don't use the subjunctive. You can express the same idea using, or in a different way without using the subjunctive. But to be honest, if you are learning how to speak Spanish, you're gonna notice that it is necessary because native speakers will use it. Uh, we will use the subjunctive constantly. We don't think about it, we just do it. And, um, Although there is a way to say things, you can go around the bushes and, 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 and say the same thing in a different way. Sometimes you're gonna find out that the most direct way to do it is by using the subjunctive. For example, to express a desire. Es, yo espero que apruebes el examen de español. I hope that you pass the Spanish test. Okay, espero que will trigger the subjunctive. Te recomiendo que. I recommend that you visit Berlin. Okay, this is the subjunctive. This is the subjunctive. Okay, you have these expressions and afterwards you use the subjunctive mood. Okay, um, how do we get to this tense? Okay, how do we get to this conjugation? Well, if to, to conjugate in the present subjunctive, which is the one you're gonna be seeing this year, um, the present subjunctive, my suggestion is go to the geo form of the verb. Okay, and then you're gonna do a switch of verb. Okay, uh, if you remember in the present tense, for example, um, vender. Okay, let's let's go with vender. Okay, vender in the present tense indicative. Will, you will say yo vendo. Tú vendes. El vende. Okay, I'm not gonna do all of them, but if you see, vendo, vendes, vende, uh, is an er verb. So we are adding S, A, M, S, A, N. Well, you're gonna switch those E's for A's. Okay? Vendas, venda, vendamos, vendáis, vendan. ER verbs and IR verbs will end with A. Consuma, 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 consumamos, consumáis, consuma. And AR verbs are going to end with y contamine, contamines, contamine, contaminemos, contaminéis, contamine. So you're gonna switch the letters, okay? So see, if you remember the present, to learn the present subjunctive is going to be very easy, okay? That's why in past um, sessions, I've been reminding everybody, you cannot forget anything because you are going to need it. In this case, you need one of the first things you learned maybe two years ago in the present tense. You needed to conjugate these tense right. Okay, you're gonna switch the endings and that's it. Okay? Uh, and now, los verbos irregulares o de cambio vocálico o stem changing verbs or boot verbs, you may know them like that. They also do the same change here, okay, in the subjunctive. Okay, something to remind, something to, to remember. They already they also do the same change. Okay, if you don't remember what a irregular verb or a same changing verb is, please, please, please um, check out our video for a Spanish one. Or um, just go to, to, to your book, okay? Because you need to remember, you need to understand that. 
Okay? Guys, if you have any questions about the subjunctive, I'm here to answer them, okay? Feel free to ask. But this is it. This is what it is. You have to do a little ending, a little change in the ending of the verb in order to use it after certain expression. Okay? All right. Very well. Very well. Now, the next thing is um, it's not as big as the subjunctive. Like I mentioned before, subjunctive is going to take a big chunk of the year. Okay? You're going to learn first how to conjugate, then um, how to use it, and then uh, you're going to have a lot of exercises in which you have to decide to use the indicative of the present tense as you know it already, or if you're going to use the subjunctive. Okay? So, and that can be a little confusing. And I'm, I'm trying to be nice. It can be, a, it can be very confusing. It can be very confusing. So please just yes, pay attention and, and, and you should be fine if you know the basic rules and you know how to conjugate in the indicative and you know how to conjugate in the subjunct. Okay? Perfecto. Now, passive voice is very simple. Okay? The passive voice, uh, as we read here, is usually used with the agent of the action is an important or doesn't want to be identified. Meaning, what, what we care about when we mention something in the passive voice is the action itself, not who did it. Who did that action is not important. For example, the 10th planet was discovered in 2005, okay? What is important in this sentence is that ten is that the tenth planet was discovered. No, who did it? That's why we mention this like that. Usually in English, you use to be plus the past participle. You remember the past participle, the ado ido form that we saw before. In Spanish, we use ser plus the past participle. And of course, most of the time, these sentences are going to be in the past. Okay? El décimo planeta fue descubierto en el 2005. Fue is set in the preterite. Remember that? From Spanish too? Uh, it's an irregular verb. And it's going to for the, all these uh, verbs that you have learned last year, including the regular verbs that you put a lot of effort into that probably, you are still need it this year. Okay? Uh, how about another, another example, for example? Uh, the building was built last year. Who built the building? That doesn't matter on this sentence. That's not what we are talking about. Okay, the important thing is that the building was built last year. El edificio fue construido. Construir means to build. Ado y the form, construido, with fue. Okay? Make sense? All right, let's do one exercise. Let's do an example here. Just one sentence. It says here, Todo el mundo admiraba a la princesa Diana. Everyone admired Princess Diana. Okay? That's, the, that's active. Todo el mundo, everybody, is doing this action. Okay? We want to say, Prince Diana was admired by everyone. Or, Prince Diana was admired. How would we say that? Well, um, La princesa Diana uh, fue admirada. A ver, let me put it here. La princesa Diana fue admirada. Okay? Admirar will be the main verb. 
the infinitive, okay, admirar, admirar, sorry, to admire, okay, the ado y the form, we remove the AR, we will put ado, admirado, the Prince Diana is a girl, so admirada, since this is a hand, uh, active driving Prince Diana, okay, make sense, this is the passing point, that's it, we use ser in the past, and we use the adoido form of the verb to create. All right, I hope it makes sense. Now, also another important thing is the use of the impersonal say. What is the impersonal say? Well, the impersonal say is a particle that we use when nobody in particular is doing an action, okay? It's very simple. It just seems like a crazy idea. Like, what are you talking about? Nobody's doing the action. No. Yeah, nobody in particular is doing the action. For example, and, and with this example, that's it. The, the examples uh, explain this by themselves. There is no much to explain. Uh, for example, for sale. Who is doing that action? Oh, we don't know. And it doesn't matter. We know that this house or this car is for sale. Who is selling it is not important. We say se vende. Okay. Third person singular or plural, the verb is used depending on the subject. Okay. If you only have one thing that is for sale, se vende. If you have several things for sale, it will be se venden, the plural. Or se alquila for rent. Who does that? Who is renting that? It doesn't matter. Se alquila. How about in Spain, one eats very well. In España se come muy bien. Who eats very well in Spain? It's just an expression. It means everybody that goes to Spain eats very well. Se come muy bien. Okay? And that's it. That's the, that's the impersonal set. It can be confusing because during all these years, uh, you've been learning that somebody is doing an action. You are learning the past tense, the past perfect, the uh, present perfect, the plus one perfect to the future. And you are learning that everybody is, somebody is doing something. And now this is for nobody in particular is doing that. So it can be a little confusing at the beginning, but trust me, it's just that. You use the impersonal se plus the third form of the verb. That's it. Okay, se vende vino, wine is sold here. Se venden dulces, sweets are sold here. Okay, guys, make sense? All right, very nice. And finally, 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 the last part of today's class, the difference between para and por. In each session, Spanish one, two, and three, I've been analyzing something similar, okay? In the first session, we analyzed the difference between set and star. I hope you all remember that. Uh, last week, we analyzed the difference between saber and conocer, okay? And this week, we are analyzing the difference between por and para, which in English means for. We have two different words for for, por and para. And trust me on that one, this one, this one is also very tricky, okay? You can learn these rules and this helps. You can learn the examples, you can analyze the examples, but this comes with familiarity with the language. For example, um, the purpose of something will be para. This Glass is for water. Es un vaso para agua. Okay? It's not a glass of wine. It's un vaso for water. Okay? We use para. We don't use es un vaso por agua. Although in English you will say for water, in Spanish would be para. Another one, for example, the recipient. The gift is for her. El regalo es para ella. 
que es for her, para ella, because we are talking about the recipient of the gift. Okay? When we talk about a deadline on a point in time in future, la tarea es para mañana, the homework is for tomorrow, this para right here. But how about for? Look, I study for two hours. Yo estudié por dos horas. This is not a point in time. This is a point in time tomorrow. Por dos horas is not a point in time. It's a length of time. So we don't say just to the para dos horas. It will be por dos horas. But in English, it still will be for. For two hours, for tomorrow. For tomorrow is a point in time. Para mañana. For two hours is a length of time. Por dos horas. You see the difference here? You see what I'm talking about? You're gonna have to study this. You are gonna, uh, you're gonna have to familiarize yourself with this um, and go over the exercises, memorize these rules, and also have a little luck, okay? Because some of this can be very confusing, okay? Some of them are easy, like, uh, to spread thank you. Gracias por la manzana. Thank you for the apple. Every time you say thank you for, it's going to be for the apple. I mean, it's going to be for, not for the apple. Okay? Okay, guys. For, um, this is it. This is all I have for you. Uh, this is everything that we have covered uh, for Spanish 3, the past participle, how to get it, how to conjugate it, how to use it as an adjective, the present perfect and the past perfect, the subjunctive, the conjugation, as well as the uses or uh, the passive voice, the personal say, and para versus for. Uh, I'm gonna stop, let's see. If you have any questions, you are welcome to ask me, please. I don't see any questions. So I hope everything is clear. I hope everything is clear. Uh, and I also hope that you have a great time this school year. Uh, I wish you the best. Please remember everything you learn in Spanish. You're gonna continue doing more Spanish. Please, please, please don't forget about it. As you saw during this seminar, uh, We've been referring to things that you have studied in the past constantly because you need it. Those were the basics and now we are building up on top. Same thing is going to happen. This is a pretty advanced, but of course, there is still more to learn, not just this. There are more things to learn. If you're gonna continue learning, please don't forget any of this, okay? Again, I wish you the best this school year. If you have any doubts, please don't hesitate to ask your teacher, ask your tutors if you have one. Um, and above all, enjoy, because learning Spanish can be very useful for your future, okay? Thank you for your attention. It was a pleasure being here with all of you. Uh, take care and good luck to everybody. Thank you. Very much.